One more example of wave interference that I want you to have time to go over is one that you see most often with the music. But, um, but once again, this has, you will see future applications on this, on, I guess I keep saying it, quantum mechanics again. So this uh, um, second example that I want you to see as an example of wave interference and why this simple mathematical procedure leads to something interesting that you wouldn't have guessed. Um, the second example is something called the bit. Um, so, I mean, I won't ask like what bit means to you um, because like heartbeat or it kind of has nothing, the way we are going to use the word bit has nothing to do with those. So bit is, uh, um, it's an interference phenomenon. Interference phenomenon that happens with um, two sources of wave or two sources of oscillation even. Um, two oscillations that's happening at two different frequency with two oscillations at different frequency. Let me start out with a demo because I think it's a uh, uh, different frequencies. Um, uh, let me start out with a demo because it's easier for you to first have seen the uh, phenomenon and then try to explain it mathematically how that happens. So let's see. Um, anybody here know the frequency to, to musical scale by heart? No one here does? Okay, never mind. Uh, let me not do musical scale because I have to look it up and I don't want to. Um, this is a software that can be used to actually record the sound. You can see that um, it's recording me right now as I'm talking. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. You can see that. All right. Um, and it can, it, um, it, I can use this to generate sine tones, like what you are dealing with in the lab. So I can use this to generate, I don't know. You guys are dealing with 500 hertz tones in the lab, right? So I can generate a 500 hertz tone. Something like that. Fairly annoying, um, loud, yeah. It kind of has to be loud. All right, um, and so you know, on this software, because 500 hertz means in one second, it's uh, oscillating 500 times. That's why you don't see it individually. But I can actually zoom in. Zoom in to a fine enough scale that I can actually see the sine wave, or cosine wave, or whatever. All right, so that's um, that's a 500 hertz um, sine wave. Now, let's see. Okay, let me get a new track. What if I generated? Um, I don't know. Uh, if I generate a 550 hertz tone, do you think you can tell the difference between 550 hertz and 500 hertz? All right, that was 550. Does it sound different? It doesn't sound different enough. Like most of you, like if you close your eyes and then I play one of the two, if you just recently heard it, then you could tell one is 550, one is 500. All right. Um, what do you think this will sound like if you hear them together? Let's give it, I haven't actually tried it, let's try it. Um, ah, wait, where do I, okay. Does it sound like either of them uh, individually? It doesn't, right? And in fact, if you're into music theory, this is where um, the whole theory of, um, what is it? Harmonious and dissonant uh, combinations are based on. I won't get into that because I don't know much about music theory. <laughs> so what I want to look at is, um, here it's a sound somehow different to you. Your ear can tell that it's not just the 500 hertz, it's not just 550 hertz, but like what it is, is it, you can't quite tell. I think it'll be easier for you to tell what's going on if, uh, 
we generate a frequency that's much closer to 500 hertz than 550 was. So let me generate something that, I don't know. Um, let me try 505. I haven't tried that before. OK, so this is 505. And this is 500. Can you tell the difference? Yeah, I mean, most of you. I mean, if you think you could tell the difference, try closing your eyes. And I'm going to randomly pick between one or the other. Uh, I'll randomly pick one. Do you think it was 505 or 500? Right, you can tell, right? Uh, it was 505. Um, yeah, if you could tell it, you might have perfect pitch, but whatever. Now, what do you think it'll sound like if you hear them together? Let's try it. It sounds nothing like those two individually. And you can visualize it better. So, you know, if I just zoom in like this, like from these shapes, it's not clear exactly why that would be happening. So let me do this particular, use this particular feature of this Audacity software. It can do what's called mix and render the tracks. As in, I, it, this is like having two different sources of sound. One at 500 hertz, one at 505 hertz. And with the mix and render, what it'll do is it'll combine the result of interference of those two waves, do this superposition principle thing, and give me the combined result. So mix and render to a new track. And this is the result that you see. And once you see this wave shape, then it should make a little more sense why you are hearing what you are hearing. Like, can you guess like why you are hearing what you are hearing? Sorry. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit. Ah. Like, why were you hearing, why are you hearing what you are hearing? No, I, mean, I want you to just look at, what does this waveform represent? Like, if you simply just saw this waveform, like, what would you think this should sound like to you? Kind of like a beeps. It gets louder, quieter, louder, quieter at a re regular interval, right? And that is what you are hearing. When you hear it, um, it's a loud, like loud and quiet at a very uh, fast five hertz interval, actually. Yeah? So that's what you are hearing. Um, and so this is what we call bit. It's uh, the result of interference between two. Um, two waves of a slightly different frequency. And what I want to show is uh, um, mathematically, analytically, that you get a shape that looks like this, like uh, a wave that's an envelope, that's inside an envelope, so that its uh, amplitude of oscillation is changing at some regular rate. 